Hello, everybody. This is Christine. I am with Dogs for Life Training and Wellness. And um, I am really excited um, today to talk with Mandy Lewis from Albert's Dog Lounge. Um, this is a topic that really means a lot to me because one, I have seen your dogs that I have adopted. And I just really feel like um, that the older dogs get passed by from puppies and, uh, you know, for people who are uh, looking to adopt, I don't think people really think about, you know, either senior dogs or older dogs rather than puppies. And in some cases, um, I do feel that, uh, you know, that an older dog tends to fit a household better. Um, so before we dive into the topic, let me go ahead and introduce to you Mandy. Uh, from uh, Albert's Lounge. Uh, so uh, Mandy, if you want to just take a few moments, introduce yourself and what you do, and then we'll go ahead and jump into our topic. Great. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Mandy Lewis. I'm the founder and president of Albert's Dog Lounge Rescue. So talking with you, you probably hear a lot of different things, um, you know, from people who are adopting like, why should they even consider, you know, a senior dog for adoption? And so what are some of the, the key pieces that you find uh, or, or like one of the main things that people might ask you? So um, I think one of the biggest things people worry about is their age. Um, and what's interesting is it's really, really difficult for us to age a senior dog. Um, so Typically, a vet would like age a dog by their teeth, but you know, when a dog hasn't had the best life, their teeth could, you know, maybe be in poor condition versus a dog that's always had, you know, great nutrition. Um, so it's really difficult for us to age a dog. So um, we try to kind of categorize the dogs by what age group they may be in. Um, but people seem to worry a lot about that age. And but I guess what I, my point is um, that it's age is kind of, it should be, and I think a little less important um, because I have seen dogs that maybe are aged at 10 years old and um, are, you know, arthritic or have kidney issues or liver issues. And then the next dog at 10 years old is, you know, making laps in the living room. Um, so, you know, age is really just a number. It shouldn't be what you use to determine a dog that goes into your house. Um, we try to encourage people to adapt dogs, not necessarily by age, by but what will is going to fit with your lifestyle, what's going to fit into your home, what are you looking for in a pet, what kind of things are you looking for as far as a dog that maybe already has training or not training, or what kind of medical issues are you willing to take on. So I know we talk a lot about senior dogs, but Truly, the whole goal of our our rescue is to try to match best fits. You know, one of the things that I think that that people ask is like, you know, I think there's this misconception about like, you know, an older dog coming from a shelter, they're passed by because people think that older dogs generally have behavior issues that are behind them. I see that that's like one of the comments that I get if I recommend to a family like, you know, um, you know, a puppy versus an older dog, you know, one of their first comments is, yeah, usually, um, you know, dogs that are in shelters, I, I just think it's a perception that people have is that these dogs have behavior issues, when in fact, there are so many incredibly beautiful dogs that are in there, not because of behavior, but just from misfortune, you know, mm -hmm. a family member passes away Absolutely. and there's nobody there or um, whatever that, you know, they get lost or I, I mean, whatever. But do you ever find those kind of? Uh, Absolutely. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, and it, it's incredible. We do end up with a lot of our dogs from owner surrenders or through, um, you know, for whatever various reasons, something has happened in their life where they're impacted and they can't keep a pet or through the death of a family member. We do get that quite a bit. Um, so a lot of these dogs have been in homes their whole lives and are great dogs and are already housebroken and crate trained um, or like you said, lost and misplaced um, for whatever reason. 
Um, but we find some exceptional, exceptional dogs um, that come through our program. Because I think that the, the next question people say is either they have behavior issues and or that they feel like they're not going to have enough time with them. Like the dog is older and then, you know, they only have this short amount of time with the dog. And I think time is so irrelevant mm -hmm. um, when, when you're bringing into one of these dogs, because I think that these dogs seem to be more appreciative. Um, I find them to have deeper connections. I have deeper connections with, with the older dogs than I do like, you know, I love puppies too, don't get me wrong. And I've had a lot of puppies in my lifetime and stuff like that. But it is a completely different, it's it's a different dynamic. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because uh, I've always said to my husband, I'm like, they know, they know. I'm like, because I, I, I literally just adopted two puppies that we ended up with in our organization because a senior mama had two puppies. And I, I, I saw that through. Um and I decided that was a one and done for me, but, <laughs> um, yeah, it's like the, um, when these old dogs get rescued, there's this, just this really special thing that I feel like they know, they know they've been rescued. They know they're safe. Um, it, it's hard to explain unless you've experienced it. Um, but it's an incredible feeling. I also love a project dog and there are people like me out there that just see the oldest, most jacked up diaper wearing, you know, no eyed, uh, <laughs> what three legged dog. And they're like, I'm in love. And, and, or I see a dog that's, you know, maybe hit the most neglectful situation, um, you know, severe mange or, um, missing all their fur. And I love to watch their transformation and become this, you know, amazing for lack of better terms, butterfly and they bloom and blossom. And you see their them go from not being able to do something to running and playing and enjoying life. And those kinds of things, watching a shelter dog develop that it's, it's um, truly rewarding and amazing. It is a transformation, um, which kind of brings me to like the next kind of misconception that I think that people think about is um, you're bringing in an older dog and they're not going to adjust to the house. Um, that, you know, that the adjustment period is difficult for an older dog versus a puppy. Um, do you find that to, to people asking that kind of question about adjustments? It's certainly a question, but I think for a dog, regardless of, um, its age, it, each dog is unique. I mean, obviously in rescue, we talk about, you know, the rule of three, three days, three weeks, three months, but every dog is unique. It's just a general guideline um, that we put out there. But I can tell you that most people, regardless if the dog is 10 or two, they need like this kind of step adjustment to settle in. Um, they're always going to be stress hormones involved. It'd be, it, I always liken it to my first day at a new job in an out of state um, job with a hundred people you don't know. It's overwhelming. Um, and you don't know where the bathroom is and you don't know where your office is. So you're, you're just, it's, it's a lot to take in and you need a few days to figure out the lay of the land. And as you get used to it, then, you know, within a couple of weeks in your new job, you're starting to make friends. And then, you know, after you've been there a couple of months, you have, you know, these deeper connections it is the same. It's the same as a dog. So yeah, it's easy if you put it into a human element perspective sometimes. Um, but regardless of age, it's, it's, it's all the same. They all have to I, adjust. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and so, you know, again, as a dog trainer, I bring dogs into my home um, that need training and stuff like that. So I'm not part of a, uh, you know, a kennel or whatever. I just feel that, you know, uh, doing it in the style in which I do, um, you know, uh, brings results a little bit different. And so the one thing that I do know is that dogs can really make, they're very uh, adaptable. Mm -hmm. and, and in a lot of cases, in the two weeks that they stay with me, it's almost like sometimes when they go back to see their parents, they're like, oh, wait a minute, because they've already adapted within a 14 day period immerse their life into the environment 
and had that structure and so forth. And so, um, and that doesn't matter the age, whether it's a puppy, because I, I take dogs at, you know, five years old. I think the oldest dog I ever had for a training was a 15 year old Yorkie. Um, and so, you know, and then it's, but, but my point is they are adaptable. Mm -hmm. And when you're pulling them out of shelters or, you know, the nice thing about your organization, um, I believe you're all foster. Yes. 100% yeah. foster based. So they're in a home, um, which is really just, yeah, that I think that just makes a huge, huge difference, Absolutely. Um, you know, for, for a dog to be in a home environment as both, as opposed to being pulled out of a uh, shelter into, into a home. Yeah, uh, we, we can tell you so many things about, you know, dogs, like when they're stressed, are they good with kids? Are they good with cats? You know, what do they behave like when there's fireworks? I mean, those are all things that we can share with somebody to the best of our knowledge, of course. Um, but there's a lot to be said for the hard work that our fosters put in um, to understanding these dogs and getting them on a routine. And, and that that bleeds over into the adoption for sure. Yeah. Um, what is a story that you can think of off the top of your head as to like a, a dog that, you know, entered into your organization and just really kind of came from like, you know, the bottom. And I know you were kind of saying that you have a spot for those kind of dogs, but, you know, how they just kind of flourished into uh, into a different dog. So. Tell me a story about my, that. If my volunteers are watching, they are all saying, oh, my God, we know who she's going to talk about. So <laughs> bring they, it out. Yeah. So um, I just adopted a dog through our program. I wasn't going to adopt anymore, but he came to us um, this last summer. He did not have a lick of fur. He was red, fire red from head to toe. He had um, a fever. He had entropian eyes. Uh, there, I can see them commenting. Um, he had um, the lymph nodes in his legs were swollen. He was so, gnats were swarming him, open sores. I mean, this guy couldn't even hardly walk. It was oh, awful. Wow. And he's now laying here on the floor with me. He has fur. We were incredibly surprised to find out he was, had brindle fur. We didn't know. Um, but he is, um, he, he's got such an amazing demeanor and it was so fun watching him bloom. I, I, he actually went viral on TikTok. Um, he's, he's turned into a beautiful butterfly. He loves every human alive. He's just the best dog in the whole world. So, um, he's kind of my, that. he's kind of my hero. So yeah, I, I, I love him so much. Uh, um, I could see that. And, and so, um, you know, some of my own experiences. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, I recently adopted a 10 year old dog. And so um, he came from Spain and uh, he, um, he, he never lived in a home. And so he was found as a one year old on the street uh, and then was uh, brought into rescue. He lived kind of in um, somewhat like a, like a dog run uh, environment. Um, and uh, I think he was adapted out for a short time and then sent back. Uh, and, uh, but like I said, he was like 10 years old. And, and when I read his story online, I, I contacted the rescue and I said, you know, send him out let's see what it's going to be like. Let's get him into a house. Let's figure this out. Let's find him what it is that he needs for his forever. Um, 10 years is a long time for somebody to wait. And so uh, we had him shipped out and uh, it was a little bumpy at first because he had, uh, he was in a dog run. So dogs were you know, around him, but they were not in his proximity. So he was kind of separated uh, from that because he had some, uh, you know, some issues with some of the dogs. So it was a little bumpy, but then he kind of adjusted. Um, and so uh, he's been with me now. I, I, I decided to adopt him in December. Um, and, uh, and he 
went from this dog that, I mean, he just laid, he just laid out of the couch for like three months. Um, and I was kind of like going, hmm, you know, he's a little couch potato. I was like, oh, all right, you know, uh, but uh, he's doing these things now that was like, you know, he's getting into the garbage, mm. uh, ripping up paper, shredding the paper. And so like his little personality is coming out. And it's just kind of really kind of neat. But he is a lover. He's just like, you know, I just sit down next to him and he kind of gets up and he's kind of got his little happy face. And so he's one of the most uh, rewarding and, re and enriching emotion that you can truly mm -hmm. connect and see that this, this animal has had this lifetime of separation, non, you know, non-contact. And I'm sure he got some attention, but it's, it's different. You know, he was in a yeah. shelter, not a foster. Actually, um, we just um, placed a dog that had been in a shelter in Alabama for 13 years. So, um, but she is thriving. She is doing wonderful. She, it was so incredibly impressive how quickly she took to getting on a couch. You know, that. you're like, look at how amazing that is. And so how do the people, have you contact, have you heard from them? Like how, how are the people saying that her transition went? Um, well, this is a, the, uh, the transition for Fiona was to a uh, previous adopter. So they have uh, other dog, Albert's dog lounge dog. Um, I think one, two of them actually. So they're, th this is their third dog to us. But one thing that we do is we like to make as much as we can, our adopters part of our family. So when the adoption ends, your relationship with us doesn't end. Um, so one thing we do a little differently than um, some rescues is we provide 30 days of free behavioral and training support through uh, an organization called Pet Academy. And it's it's um, they have force free trainers and behaviorists available for a text message for the first month um, free of charge. And you can always extend that out if you wanted. We then also have a Facebook group that we invite our adopters to join. And it's an incredible group of people like minded people. Um, they share stories, they share trials and tribulations, um, the passing of uh, previous pets, even non-Albert's dog, lounge dogs. And it, it, this group is so supportive of one another, um, especially in hardships. It's really fun to watch. And I will tell you on my worst of my days and days where I think rescue has taken me to like the lowest of lows. I just go to the um, adopters Facebook page and I start scrolling through the amazing photos of dogs that I know were in shelters now riding on boats or doing camping trips or, you know, sleeping. There's one little um, Yorkie that has like been all over the country. I mean, she's, it's incredible. And her mom takes pictures of her in every location that she visits when they travel. So it's so fun to be part of. And, and that's what kind of makes Albert special is that, you know, you're part of our family and, and we want you to stay that way. And, and we also have a lot of great connections, you know, through our fosters, our fosters stay in touch with the adapters. I can tell you, like I had people that came to my wedding that started out as adapters through our organization. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, a tight group. Yeah, it is. It's it's a tight group. Now, people um, can uh, actually uh, follow you on Facebook and or they can visit you uh, on your website. And so off of your website, is that where they would find um, things, for example, like the adoptable dogs and uh, the documentation? And how do, how do you usually work that out with people? Yeah, so our website is very robust very easy to um, uh, maneuver through. Uh, we have all of our contact information, adoptable dogs, our adoption application, frequently asked questions about fostering. We have um, information about if you uh, don't know what to do when you're planning end of life, like how can we help you at that point? Um, we, we have information about estate planning and about contacting Alberts if you want to put your dog in to your living will or to um, your estate plan. Um, we have information about our adoption policies. Um, so everything is there. Um, information about all our news articles, uh, all our financial information. We're a very transparent organization. 
Um, so it, it, it's our team, our board of directors, all the stuff we're involved in is out there. So it's a great, it's a great site. Yeah, I love that. And you kind of brought up, you know, like one of the reasons why um, I think that, uh, you know, for me, that I, I don't think that people um, think about, um, and you brought up a good point, um, is about, you know, end of life. Um, and so when I think about a, uh, you know, for myself, I, I, I don't get puppies anymore. I get, you know, like I said, you know, an older dog because one, I don't want my dog to outlive me. <laughs> That's just me personally. Um, I would, you know, I would rather, um, uh, have them pass away before me because I don't think a lot of people think about that, which is why a lot of dogs and older dogs end up into rescue is because people don't really make that plan for their animals should they pass away and or something happen to them. And I think that that's something that's really important uh, for Absolutely. a responsible dog owner to be really thinking about. So. Um, that's a great point. So it is a, is a really big thing that we stress a lot is to have a plan in place. And I know just for my speaking for myself, um, my mom has passed away 13 years and I still have her dog. I still have her chihuahua. So, um, and it wasn't a dog I had planned to take on, I, but it, things happened and, and I took that over for her, but there was never a plan in place. And, and we do end up with a lot of dogs because family members are like, my family, my mom or my grandma passed away suddenly. We weren't expecting it. And here we have her pets and we don't have a plan in place and we can't exactly. keep the dog. And, and that's how they end up in shelters. Exactly. And we it brings up two interesting things is um, when they end up in shelters, a lot of times shelters will contact us. We have great relationships with uh, many shelters throughout the state of Wisconsin. And we do end up with a lot of our dogs that way. Um, because seniors don't do well in shelters. So if you have an older dog, it's something else to consider, even if not making that plan for yourself, making that plan for your dog so it doesn't end up scared in a shelter. It has a place. Alberts is willing to be in your will. We obviously can't give any legal advice, but if you work with your attorney, um, whoever that is, and you want to add us, we can give you the inf our inf contact information. And we can get that put in there. And then the other point I kind of brings to my attention that I wanted to mention is as people get older, one of the things that I don't think also gets talked about en enough is um, that responsibility. I think pets are great for older people is they've proven to be amazing health benefits to older people. It gives them something to take care of a will to go on sometimes if they're alone. Um, so we always encourage those people if they aren't in the capacity to perhaps purchase and take care of the financial responsibilities of a pet or are concerned about a pet outliving them. Um, we do love to help um, maybe somebody older be a foster parent. Um, as a foster parent, we provide all the costs and expenses for your pet. We can provide respite care if you're traveling and going on vacation. We have respite fosters um, and we also um, have um, volunteers that do help with transportation to and from the vet if that were needed. So um, if you're somebody that maybe is think, saying, gosh, I wish I could have a pet, um, but I just am not in a position to afford one, or maybe I'm concerned about that, um, fostering is a great thing to get into because you don't have all that to worry about. And you can try a lot of fun dogs. Yeah, that is a great thing. And so kind of speaking of that, Again, going back to some of the misconceptions is I think that, you know, particularly with families um, that might, uh, you know, like I think an older dog for um, for it is usually when I start recommending, uh, you know, for somebody to kind of veer away from the puppy is generally, you know, the busy mom. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're busy. They got, you know, their kids are in all these sports and it's like, why would you get a puppy? Yeah. You know, why would you get a puppy when you've got all this, who can do the potty training? Who's going to set up, you know, the, um, you know, the, the training that needs to make sure that the dog is getting socialized, putting your basic training down, who's going to spend all that time as a busy mom 
as opposed to getting a dog that's older. So I think one of the misconceptions is um, getting a puppy for uh, a busy family. And it's yeah. to me, it's just like, no, a, an older dog would certainly suit that, that much better. We, it's interesting because I, I actually, when I got into this, I assumed most of our adoptions would be older adults, you know, empty nesters, that kind of thing. Um, but we get a lot of young adopters that are just like, look, I live in an apartment. I have a social life. I'm not interested in all the work that goes along with the puppy. They get an adult dog, you know, maybe on a younger end of the senior spectrum and they know that they can count on their dog to not be barking, not be chewing, not be destroying anything. If they want to go to the pub after work or out for dinner, they don't have to worry about, you know, having to be home for potty accidents. And um, there's a lot to be said for that. And 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 we use the term senior rather loosely, right? Because it's a pretty large um, age gap. It ranges. Most people consider a senior to be, you know, seven and older. Yeah, that's when, what I would say. when you think of a chihuahua that's seven, that's barely like mid eight, middle age. Right. I mean, it's considered a senior in the whole age thing, but like my chihuahua is 13 and still jumps off the couch. Like it's a lunatic. So, uh, you know, there's no slowing them down at 13 even. I mean, That's so right. yeah. the smaller think, dogs live much, much longer. Seven yeah. is nothing. Yeah. I, I, um, and again, I think what, again, one of the misconceptions that people have is about, you know, that time spent, mm -hmm. um, and like, you know, that attachment that they have. And I got to say, there are, uh, you know, dogs that have been adopted that are older. It's, it's like, I didn't, I don't even miss the puppyhood. It's like, you know, for me to have like a seven, I had a, uh, one of my girls, her name was Angie. I got her, she was five and a half years old. And, uh, Again, one of the a heart connection dog. She was super special in it, it, and I didn't feel this sense of like loss. Right. Um, I, I, again, I just tend to feel the that the relationship that you get from these older dogs that are coming in through rescue is a much different sensation than getting a, a bratty puppy. <laughs> so I, I um, love you. it. Yeah, love it. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Christine. I am with Dogs for Life uh, Training and Wellness. And so um, I am an educator. Um, I specialize in um, effective communication uh, and relationship building for dogs and their humans. Um, I have a vast amount of knowledge and many years experience in developing uh, different programs that help to gap the relationship between the dog and, and their people. And so if that is something of interest, you could certainly go to the dogsforlife.com website and uh, look us up. I'm in the Chicago area. And I want to thank you, Mandy, for joining me today and talking about this very um, special topic. Um, I'm glad. I hope we kind of cleared up some misconceptions based on, you know, adopting an older dog who would be more, you know, who are the qualifications or uh, who might be qualifications, uh, you know, what, what category people might be in. Um, I love the fact that you hit those topics about end of life. And again, that has always been a concern of mine of why I get uh, a, a, an older dog. Not that this is about me or anything like that, but you tend to gravitate towards something that you're attached to. Yep. Um, and so um, I think your organization is fantastic. And um, I, as I, I mentioned to you before, I have, uh, I have been following you for quite some time. In fact, um, I, uh, I think you were the, the organization I reached out because I do that periodically. I read a story and I get this like, oh, well, I'm not doing anything right now. I can help with that, you know, kind of a thing. So you don't just take senior dogs because you also have other dogs. Because I believe the dog that we worked with was your. Uh, a Cocker Spaniel, I think. Was a little Cocker Spaniel girl. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and so she was a younger dog. 
Um, so you have uh, seniors as one, but you also take um, uh, special needs dogs? Uh, yep. So we seniors is the bulk of our dogs, but we do also do special needs dogs. And we also have um, ho hospice fosters just set aside for um, dogs that are extremely geriatric, um, you know, failing in health. And maybe we know that the, their life is very short. Um, they're in a shelter environment. And so we may purposefully take them out just to give them like a bucket list. So um, I don't know if Lori's still listening, but we had a 19 year old um, that ended up in a city shelter and um, I, I, they knew she was, they were going to euthanize her just because she's 19, um, which most people would think makes perfect sense. But um, they called us and said, do you want to just take her? And I, we thought maybe we'd give her a good weekend and send her home. No, this girl had other plans. Um, she lived for ooh, several months um, and she had a full um, bucket list and she went on TV and she visited like Michigan and she got ice cream and she went to McDonald's, like went on a motorcycle. It was incredible. She uh, had acupuncture and massage and went swimming and uh, she had the best little it was incredible. It was incredible. She had the best life. So we do hospice as well. And, and we have amazing fosters that will just give these old dogs like a great weekend before they're loved and pass away in somebody's arms. So we kind of do the whole, whole shebang of dogs that I basically, if a dog struggles in a shelter or struggles to get adapted through a normal organization, it's pretty much a candidate for Albert's Dog Lounge. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So again, thank you so much uh, for joining me. Um, and uh, it was really just, it's just a blessing of what you do for, uh, you know, thank for dogs. You. I think it really just requires those special kind of people that uh, do what you do. Um, we have and, a full team of special people. Yeah, so I love that. I might have to uh, kind of tap into you guys a little bit more because, uh, yeah, just to be a, a part of a, you know, part of a, a group of that uh, is just, it's just lovely. So anyways, I'd like to thank you all for joining me today um, and Mandy from Albert's Dog Lounge. And again, if you have any questions, you can visit her on the organization uh, at her website, which is albertsdoglounge.org. Uh, um, in there, you can see what dogs are available. And uh, certainly, she's tapped into uh, a lot of information that can be found there. So again, thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful, beautiful night. And uh, we'll talk to you again. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Thank you.